from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the Lenovo IdeaPad A1. This is a 7-inch Android tablet. It's running 2.3 gingerbread, but it's also very affordable. It's around $200 to $250, and it's a Wi-Fi only tablet, no 3G, so no contracts, nothing like that. So if you're looking for something you can do a little bit more than the Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet, this just might be it. This is Lenovo's budget 7-inch Android tablet. Now, so far we've seen more high-end tablets like the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus, which sells for around $399 or so. The HTC Flyer has all but disappeared from the market. That was bargain price before it did disappear, but gone now. And there's the Toshiba Thrive 7, which is around $379 or so. So this guy is $249 for the 16 gig, but you know Lenovo, if you ever looked at their notebook computers, they're always having sales. So for example, this is Valentine's week, and now the pink and the blue ones are on sale for only $209, and you might find them discounted in your local store as well. This competes more with the Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet than it does with the more expensive Android tablets. It's a 7-inch display. It's 1024 by 600 pixels, which is now sort of at the lower end of the 7-inch spectrum for resolution. Older 7-inch tablets use that. Some now are actually going up to 1280 by 800, which makes for some serious pixel density. This is not an IPS display or, or super good, so it's not as good as the Nook tablet or even the old Nook Color, which had an IPS display, or even the Kindle Fire. If you're looking directly at the display and in just in medium ambient room lighting, it's not bad. In bright light, it completely disappears, though. And viewing angles are pretty bad. Straight on again, it looks fine. From the sides, pff, forget it, you're not going to see it. It weighs 0.88 pounds, so just under a pound. And it's about a half an inch thick. This is a brushed aluminum look, says Lenovo. Here's your single mono speaker right here. Here's your micro USB port. That's your micro SD card slot right there. Nothing on this side. Here you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It's actually a combo mic headphone jack if you want to do some VoIP calling over Skype or something like that. Power buttons right here. And these are your volume controls with a kind of nice sculpted shape to them, as you can see. It says a magnesium alloy inner roll cage like Lenovo Notebooks, which is kind of cool. And the back is available in four colors. You can see it's super duper high gloss. Uh, it's going to get nasty looking pretty quickly, I can tell you. It's available in black, white, pink, or blue currently. Got your three megapixel camera on the back. Takes eh, shots, you know, not really very high resolution there. And there's a front video chat camera as well. It does have an ambient light sensor. It also has an accelerometer. I would rotate it right now, but this is the home screen, and the home screen does not rotate. Here we have capacitive touch buttons. Now, you'll notice you can barely see these, and the, this is pretty good lighting right here. So in the dark, just about forget about it. Really annoying. They are backlit. If you touch the screen, touch the buttons, rather, it'll come on really briefly. See how quick that was? It's going to drive you crazy in a dimly lit location. Even if you memorize kind of where, which button's on what side, well... The exact location isn't an easy thing. Touch the menu button, you've got search function also built into there, and you can access notifications and all full settings over there. You have your back button, and this is just your home button right here. And we've got this little launcher strip at the bottom that Lenovo's add to customize, and we've got this launcher, which we've seen on other Lenovo Android tablets too, and you can customize this. Right now they have Watch, which takes you to Gallery, Read takes you to Kindle, which is bundled. Listen takes you to music player and email takes you to email and you can tap on this and you can assign each zone to whatever you like. And over here, this will take you into the full Android settings menu. Now, here's the bad news. This runs Android OS 2.3. Gingerbread, that's the phone version of the Android operating system, and we're surprised that Lenovo actually released it with something that's so wildly out of date. Honeycomb has been out forever, in fact, as you know, now we're moving on to Ice Cream Sandwich on some of the new tablets like the Asus ePad Transformer Prime. And Lenovo says it will not get an upgrade. You're not going to get Honeycomb or Ice Cream Sandwich on this guy ever. So it's kind of locked back in time like the Kindle and the Nook are, which run highly customized versions of Android, and that's one of the reasons why they do run the older OS, because they had more leeway for customization. So you have to be happy with that more phone-centric version of the operating system and the phone-optimized apps that this will often get pushed instead of tablet apps. So if we tap the launcher here, you're going to see something that looks just like your Android phone if you have one. That's your standard launcher right here. Screen's reasonably reactive to touch. It has two points of capacitive multi-touch. There is no active digitizer here, so there is no active pen. You could use a capacitive pen, not very precise though. 
And you've got the little home button here right back there, and you've got multiple home screens. Lenovo really doesn't go to town with any custom widgets. Pretty much the only thing that you get that's customized is this right here. It runs on a 1 GHz single core TI OMAP CPU with PowerVR graphics acceleration. Yeah, it's a single core. This feels like kind of like six months ago again, doesn't it, here with that single core CPU? I mean, granted, it is, relatively speaking, affordable, but even the Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet have dual core CPUs these days, so, hmm, what a good part about this guy is it is full Android. You're not locked down to some highly customized firmware where you're worried about rooting if you want to get more out of your tablet as you would with one of the e-reading LCD-based tablets like the Fire. You'll notice that we didn't see any HDMI port here, so just like the e-reading tablets, there is no HDMI out. The only thing you've got is that micro USB port and the micro SD card slot for expansion, which is nice. There is Wi-Fi 802.11bg and single band Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR, so it's nice to have that Bluetooth. And it has a GPS, and Lenovo is real proud of the fact that this has a GPS that will even work offline, which means you don't have to have an active internet connection, which is a good thing. This is a Wi-Fi based tablet, so you may not be near a hot spot of any kind when you're trying to navigate around. The, the drawback is, well, this screen is pretty hard to see outdoors, so if you've got this walking around as a GPS or even in your car, it might be kind of hard to see the screen. They do bundle NavDroid, which is okay navigation solution. You're allowed to download one map of like one state, for example, and it's based on public domain maps. So when you use navigation, the first thing it tells you is this is public domain info, so gee, it may not be right. We're sorry if you get really lost. That said, you can also load third-party applications that support downloadable maps like Copilot or something like that if you want to get preloaded maps. And this is what NavDroid looks like. Uh, again, not super high resolution display and uh, not real fancy maps compared to something like Google Maps with its amazing POI database, but it, it's a basic solution that does come with it and gets the job done. And again, you get to download one state with this version without paying any money. And you can pinch zoom in and you can actually get some more granular detail, assuming there is some in this part of our fair state. Maybe not. And you can tell it to find your location on the map. Now this map is actually stored locally, so why it's taking a little bit to draw, I don't know. But here we go, a little bit more granular detail. So that's NavDroid, which is bundled. It does also come with Google Maps and Google Navigation, so if you do have wireless internet access for, the, say, using your phone as a mobile hotspot, or if you have a MiFi or something like that, you can use Google Maps and navigation on this as well. In terms of other bundled software in here, we've got Amazon Kindle, we have Google Books, we've got Docs to Go, and this is nice, this is the full version of Documents to Go. That means you can also create Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents. That's a nice touch for a budget tablet. And you can also access online files like Google Docs files and stuff like that. You can see sometimes I get a little hesitation here. This is not the world's most responsive tablet. Again, it's that single core 1 gigahertz CPU, and the screen could be a little bit more touch responsive. Other than that, we've got standard stuff again, like Google Search, Google Navigation. We've got Gmail, Email, the YouTube player. We have Lenovo's own app shop, which we've seen on other Android tablets from Lenovo, and that's just kind of like a, a vetted version of the existing Android market for the most part. ES File Explorer is preloaded, which is kind of neat. That's a free file explorer, but it's, it's a good one. We've downloaded Adobe Flash. It was not pre-installed. eBuddy is here. They haven't added as much stuff as they have on their previous Android tablets, and that's a good thing, because they kind of used to put like a million card games on there and a, a bunch of stuff that you maybe didn't need and slows it down. So this is running leaner, cleaner. And of course, you have full access to the Android market, and you will see the phone version of the Android market, not the Honeycomb version. There you go. In terms of video playback performance, this can handle 720p video up to high profile MPEG 4 H.264 format. And that's not too bad considering that it's only a 1 GHz single core CPU. It does not do 1080p video. If you try, in fact, it says, no, I can't do that. So we have some 1080p videos showing here, or loaded here, but if we tap on them, it just says, sorry, no can do, can't play that. We're going to test out our 720p high profile. Serenity trailer. You hear the speaker volume. 
close to maximum now. Not super loud, but usually 7 inch tablets are not super loud. So it plays just fine, and it's not even bad for video watching. You know, it's not the greatest display in the world, but if you're, again, sitting indoors in reasonable indoor ambient light, nothing too bright, it looks just fine, actually, for watching videos. It's good enough. Likewise, it's also just fine for ebooks too. It may not be the highest resolution display, but it, I don't see any pixelation in letters, and it's certainly powerful enough to do Kindle, the Nook app, all those good e-reading apps. And then we're going to check out the YouTube player, video playback, which actually does a very high quality video these days, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with using it. We're going to try an HD trailer. Obviously, this is streaming over Wi-Fi 811N, not 3G or 4G. And it plays just fine. Looks good. Now we'll see how I can handle Adobe Flash in the browser, which is much more challenging. And before we actually go to West, I just want to show you this keyboard. This is Lenovo's Go keyboard, they call it, and there's a bunch of skins. But one neat thing about it is it supports a whole lot of languages out of the box. Check all those out. And you can add more dictionaries, too, to it. And languages, so that's kind of neat, and that's a little bit different. And you've got the integration of the speak it function right there too. One thing that's a little weird is the kind of short and truncated space bar, but it does give you a big old dot com button there in the forward slash, which is pretty handy. And you have the usual auditory feedback, which you can turn off if you don't like it. So here we are on a website, and you can see there's a little sluggish there just to scroll. Pinch zooming. Again, there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm not the fastest, smartest guy on the block this tablet. I'll check out a Adobe Flash video review. We'll look at our AT&T Galaxy Note video review. And again, a little slow, the Kindle Fire kind of beats it here. A little frame drop just as a little add at the bottom LTE, logo, but it's actually doing okay now. Let's see if we can pop it out to full screen. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note for AT&T, and once again we're living large. We reviewed the international versions a couple of months ago, and happily it's mostly unchanged from these. So it's doing okay, but you can see it is dropping some frames here in full screen 480p mode, and even occasionally in 360 mode, but hey, for the price, at least it can do it. Now we're testing out gaming, and we're going to use Gorilla Bob. 3D game. It actually does pretty well. Since a lot of games that were optimized for single core phones of not too long ago, there's enough that you can choose to play. You need some good 3D games. Little Lenovo A1, well you know it's not a rocket scientist and the benchmark's 1067 on Quadrant and about 1100 on Antutu benchmark, it's some of the lower numbers we've seen lately. And for the SunSpider JavaScript test, where lower numbers are better, it scores 63.45. Wow, that's not very good at all. But as you'll see experientially, the web browser, it's, it's okay. 
Lenovo has a 3300 milliamp battery that's sealed inside and they say it's good for about seven hours of web browsing on Wi-Fi, shorter period of time if you're going to be watching videos, say maybe five, six hours, and up to eight if you're playing music with the screen off. Uh, so that's not too bad. We, we're sort of putting it through our battery test right now, but I'd say that it's going to clock in probably somewhere around five and a half to six hours of actual varied use, including web browsing and playing a couple of YouTube videos, that kind of thing, and reading some ebooks. So that's the Lenovo IdeaPad A1 7-inch Android Gingerbread Tablets, available now. List price is $249 for the 16 gig, but maybe you'll find it cheaper. Like I said, Lenovo is selling for $209 on their website right now. There may be more specials. Its biggest selling point is indeed its price. It's less expensive than pretty much every other 7-inch tablet on the market, except for the Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet, which are billed as e-readers and don't have full access to the Android operating system. This guy is a full Android tablet with direct access to the market. It has a GPS, it has Bluetooth, and it has Wi-Fi, so it's full featured there. You're not going to have to hack it just to try to customize it and put some apps on there that might not be available on the e-reader markets, for example. It has a GPS that works offline. Lenovo thinks that's a great selling point, and it could be, too. Of course, with Wi-Fi, you're going to need a hotspot or something like that if you want to use Google Maps, but if you're using something where you can preload maps, like the included Navdroid, then you're set. You don't actually need a data connection. The drawbacks are, well, it's obviously not the sharpest knife in the drawer. It's just a single core 1 gigahertz CPU, but it's capable enough certainly to use for e-reading, YouTube, video playback, and some web browsing, though it's not the fastest web browsing experience. You can even play some games, as you saw. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.